All right, what is going on guys? I'm We Got Bored and welcome back to another video. You know what, this time for this video, instead of saying why I haven't uploaded in the past two weeks and spending like 10 minutes just explaining that, we're just gonna cut all the bull darn and just get right into the video. So welcome to middle school funny moments, number three, part three, whatever you wanna call it. You guys should know the drill by now. I put together a bunch of funny stories from my middle school. You guys hopefully laugh, but probably not cause I'm not funny. And then you like the video, boom, e easy, easy, all done. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so the other day I was just finished from a long hard day at school, you know, grinding that schoolwork as I do because I'm a very good student. So I was waiting outside the school, waiting for my bus to come and the bus finally came and usually when we get on the buses, I don't know why, but the principal stands on like the outside of the bus so that he can let us on. I don't know why, but for some reason when we're getting on our buses, the principal just feels the need to linger around there and just kind of like watch us get on the bus. It's really weird. I guess that's what principals do though. But anyway, it seemed like a pretty normal day. You know, me and the boys were just hopping onto the bus as usual nothing special was really happening so far and so there's this one girl on my bus who in elementary school in like the first couple years of middle school was like really really popular like everybody kind of prayed to her and like bowed down to her did whatever she said and I never really did like her at all like as a person and neither did a bunch of other people so towards the end of last year and the start of this year so like the end of seventh grade and the beginning of eighth grade she started to uh, climb down the popularity scale if you know what I mean and anybody at my school if you know who I'm talking about right now this is not a diss at all okay maybe it kind of is but this is not a diss I'm just trying to set the stage for our viewers who don't really know what's going on so for the sake of this story we're just gonna call this girl um we're just gonna call this girl Karen okay I know that's a really repulsive name and it kind of fits the persona if you know what I mean so I was getting on the bus and so was Karen she was like right behind me or in front of me or something but she was getting on the bus at the same time as I was right and so the principal was standing somewhat near the bus as he does you know he's he's kind of lurking a little bit and he's trying to strike up a conversation with some of the kids so on this particular day Karen was wearing this shirt that was like really really ripped like it was just ripped enough to like look the way she wanted to without like not being a shirt like this girl's shirt was more ripped than Dwayne the Rock Johnson just to put it in perspective for you guys so she's getting on the bus wearing this like completely torn apart shirt and the principal goes hey did you buy that shirt like that or did you make it like that cuz like you know some people buy ripped clothing and other people like to get normal clothing that works perfectly fine and like rip it up themselves you know it's all a matter of preference and DIY capabilities so the principal asks her this pretty normal question at least I think and she replies with her smug voice which is so annoying I swear it's like one of the reasons a lot of people hate her so Karen goes, no, I bought it like this. Which for me, and I bet the principal too, judging by what he said next, was a very shocking comment because if you saw this girl's shirt, like it was so ripped, it was practically not a shirt. Like selling this in a store would actually be like a struggle. How would you put it up on the little like coat hanger thing or the shirt hanger thing? Like it was so ripped, you couldn't do anything with it. So she says that she bought the shirt like that and the principal kind of stands there and like stops for a minute. And now that I look back at it, he was probably calculating in his very massive brain what way to roast her so hard that she like is verbally annihilated so mr. principal after the couple seconds that he had to spend just to calculate what method of roasting her he looks back at this girl and he goes well if you bought the shirt like that I hope you didn't pay much for it <laughs> Okay, so earlier when I was recording this video, I didn't know what to put as the second story in the video because as you know how these videos go, I usually put like two stories just to get the video to 10 minutes and also just to entertain you guys with a little bit of variety, you know? And while it may seem like my school is absolutely crazy, it's really not that crazy of a place. Like not that much stuff goes down at our school, but when it does, I make videos on it, which is the only stuff that you guys hear. So I was just sitting here thinking, what am I gonna do for the rest of this video? Because while a three minute story about how a visco girl at our school got absolutely clowned on by the school principal is all right it's not enough content for a full video so i needed something to make up the rest of this video and thankfully the content gods have blessed me once again because this next story that i'm about to tell you guys is no joke no scam probably the craziest story that i have ever talked about on my channel so this isn't actually a story from my middle school that i go to but it's a story from a high school that i'm gonna go to after my middle school that like everybody in my 
my middle school goes to, so I thought I might as well include it. So let's just call this high school Clown Academy for the purpose of this video. Of course, I'm not gonna use the real name of the high school, and because Clown Academy is such a good name, I just thought it would be really fitting for this school. So it was just a normal day at Clown Academy. Everybody was minding their own business, being clowns, learning how to toot their horns and wear their funny looking shoes, just as you do in clown school, okay? So this one kid at school and this other kid at school got into a bit of a, uh, a bit of a scramble, if you will, a bit of a brawl, and so this kid, for whatever reason, didn't like this other kid who went to the school. So these two kids were getting into a bit of a fight at school because they didn't necessarily like each other. I don't know if it was a physical fight or like a word fight or like a verbal, verbal execution as the principal did to our Visco girl earlier, but these two clowns at Clown Academy did not necessarily like each other, okay? That's all you really have to know. So let's just call these kids uh, Tyrone and Kyle, okay? Those are their names. Those are the two kids that don't really like each other at Clown Academy. So these two kids, Tyrone and Kyle, are fighting at Clown Academy. How many times have I said that? But these two kids don't really like each other that much, and so Tyrone decides that the next day he is going to settle things with Kyle. So the next day, Tyrone comes to school with the intent of doing some funny things to Kyle. Nobody was really sure what he was gonna do, but they knew that things were gonna get a little ugly, a little funky if you will, okay? So Tyrone comes to school and he's talking to Kyle and they're just kind of like yelling at each other and like, you know, insulting each other and doing what people do when they don't like each other. So eventually this battle between Kyle and Tyrone gets more and more intense and it comes to the point where they're like physically fighting like they're throwing punches at each other and stuff things are starting to get out of hand so in the middle of the fight people are kind of realizing that it's getting nowhere so Tyrone reaches into his bag which is never a good sign okay when two kids are beefing at school and somebody reaches into their bag you know it can't end good so Tyrone reaches into his bag and everybody's thinking oh poop he's gonna pull out like some sort of weapon or some sort of dangerous item okay and in a way he does cuz he pulls out of his bag nothing other than a frying pan that's right ladies Ladies and gentlemen, our big brain boy Tyrone decided to bring a frying pan to school to beat up Kyle. So Tyrone takes the frying pan out of his bag and without hesitation smacks Kyle across the face. And I don't know about you guys, but even though it's a frying pan, which is a cooking item, it still hurts when you get slapped in the face with something made out of metal, okay? So people were starting to get worried because this kid Kyle could be actually hurt because getting smacked in the face with a metal frying pan does hurt a lot and can cause damage to your body, I do not recommend doing so. So all this commotion was going on because this kid just got hit in the face with a frying pan and Tyrone with his sheer power and force looks down at his opponent who he just struck and realizes that it's not Kyle. So after assaulting a kid with a frying pan in a high school and mind you, the kid who assaulted the other kid with the frying pan, Tyrone was 19 years old and Kyle was 15. Okay, I don't know why Tyrone was 19 and still in high school but that's besides the point. So after hitting somebody who is four years younger than you with a frying pan, you realize that it's not the person you actually intended to hit? I mean, I guess that's why they call the school Clown Academy though, to be fair. So this entire Avengers fight scene goes down at Clown Academy and in the meantime, a couple minutes after all of this happens, somebody decides to pull the fire alarm. So the kids in Tyrone's classroom were really scared because he just hit a kid with a frying pan and everybody else in the school was also scared because the fire alarm was going off. It was just a crazy day at clown school, okay? So because the fire alarm was going off, a lot of the kids in the school thought that there was an actual fire and so they evacuated the school, but there turned out to be no fire. There was just a kid hitting people with pants. So everybody was evacuating the school because the fire alarm was going off. And so at least where I live, if somebody pulls the fire alarm for any reason, within the next 10 minutes, there will be like fire trucks, ambulances, and police coming to the school, right? Because they think there might actually be an actual fire and as everybody was evacuating the school the teachers were trying to like hold down pan man because he was like clearly armed and dangerous and so the teachers were trying to like hold him down and like control him and stuff and he started trying to hit them with the pans too and so the police came to the school because they thought there was a fire and they saw pan man trying to hit teachers with a frying pan and so now the police are coming at Tyrone as well because he is just so dangerous with his frying pan just hitting people left and right so at this point Cloud 
Clown Academy is in absolute chaos, okay? The fire alarm's ringing, people are running outside of the school, our boy Tyrone has teachers chasing after him, and police chasing after him, and at this point you would think that he would just stop and like, put down the weapon, put down the frying pan, and just give up, okay? But as a wise poster on the wall of an English classroom in a middle school once said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So Tyrone, after all of this, decides that he's not gonna give up. So Tyrone picks up the frying pan one last time and swings on the police like he's about to cook them like some eggs. Oh my god, he is insane. So Pan Man is swinging his deadly frying pan at the police and after all this, how does his rampage end? He, he, he got tased, so um, yeah, yeah, that end of story, bye. So a couple of you guys may be thinking, Adam, this sounds like a very serious story and situation and there is a lot of violent acts that have been caused in this story and so hopefully nobody got hurt because if they did, this is not funny, didn't laugh, I am disliking the video and unsubscribing from your channel. So this story happened really recently and so I'm not sure if all of my details are 100% accurate but apparently everybody was fine as far as like physical wise, like Kyle was perfectly fine which is honestly really surprising because if I got hit in the face with a frying pan, I would not be making YouTube videos anymore. Now as far as the future for Tyrone goes, it's not looking too bright because Tyrone was actually 19 during this incident so since he was legally an adult, he's getting the punishment that an adult would get if they assaulted a 15 year old with a frying pan. So some people have been saying that he could get up to 20 years in prison which like I guess you should get a decent punishment for assaulting a 15 year old with a frying pan but at the end of the day like it makes for a pretty good story time video so you couldn't get that long in prison for it. But of course then being on the other end, nobody would ever want to get hit with a frying pan at school. Which is why you should like the video because if you don't, Pan Man will come to your house and hit you with a frying pan. No joke, no scam. And you should also subscribe to the channel. We got bored for more random videos at random times and I will see you guys in the next one.